Hello, I'm Sensei Alex Kakuyo, North American Correspondent for Buddhist Door Global. Thanks for joining me for this episode of The Ordinary Buddhist. The title of today's talk is Listening to the Crickets. Before we get into that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post talks in the future. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that'd be great too. So, one nice thing about living out here on the homestead, especially at night, is you can listen to all of the animals. We have frogs, we have owls, and we have crickets. I used to love, especially when I was a child, listening to the crickets and trying to find them at night around my house. But it was difficult because there's an interesting thing that happens with crickets. The males rub their wings together to chirp, chirp, chirp for the reason that most animals sing during the day or at the night, they're trying to attract a mate. However, they also don't want to be eaten. So if something like a child, let's say, or a grown man in this case, gets too close to the cricket, they stop making noise. Now, in order to continue listening to their song, you either have to move away or you have to sit still long enough for them to become comfortable and begin singing once again. It's only by being still that we can not only listen to the crickets, but occasionally find them in the night. The same is true of our thoughts, and that's why we practice meditation. During the day, there is so much noise and movement that oftentimes we hardly have time to think, much less examine our thoughts to figure out which ones are helpful and which ones are not. It's only by sitting still and being quiet just like a child trying to find a cricket in the night, that we can hear and see what's going on in our head and we can learn to act accordingly. When we sit on the cushion, back straight, chin slightly tucked, eyes closed, breathing in and out through the nose, we're not doing that just to look cool. We're doing that because it allows our mind to sing. It allows our heart to speak to us in the same way that a cricket speaks when it's trying to attract a mate. And when we listen to that song within us, we learn how to end suffering, not just for us, but for all sentient beings. Amitabha.